All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. So the last video, we beat up on cover mm -hmm. crops pretty good. This video, how to get started to set yourself up for success, and how are we going to measure success from the cover crops? And I tell guys all the time, you have to make it easy and convenient, otherwise you're not going to do it. So what we're going to do is the closest field to the farmyard, you're going to pick 60 feet. That's it, 60 feet wide. That is it. The only reason I say 60 feet is because the little three-point broadcaster can throw a 20 to 30 foot pattern. And whether that 60 feet is a half acre or five acres, we don't care. That that is irrelevant. We do not care the number of acres. What we're going to do is we're going to mark that spot on the headlands. And that spot, it has to be representative of the field. Don't pick the bad spot in the field. Um, it's going to represent just an average spot in the field. And <clears throat> then that's your soil health test plot for the next five years. Do not move the, the, your soil health test plot with crop rotations. Dedicate that spot. No matter what, you dedicate that spot. Let, let some failures happen in there if you think they're going to happen. That's okay. You're out an acre. We can live with that. You haven't signed up any equip loans at this point. Then that will come down the road. Uh, you're, you're, the reason I say the three-point broadcast spinner spreader, because it's cheap, it's fast, and it's easy, and you don't even have to calibrate it. The last thing you need to do when just learning to do covers is to go either buy or build some type of interseeder uh, that you got to calibrate and, and, you know, it only covers six rows and you're running down a lot of headland. It's complicated. It's hard to hook up. No, you just want to throw the three point spinner on, dump your seed in, run the gate fairly tight. You go down and back. So this spring, what you're going to do is everything normal. The first year you get into this, this spring, everything normal, tillage, planting, herbicide. We do not want our herbicide to change our herbicide program at all to accommodate cover crops. We are focused on our cash crop. We are adding covers. Years five and six, we'll worry about herbicide program adjustments then. Years one, two, and three, we are not deviating our herbicide program. So spring, planted tillage in the spring, all normal. Come summertime, depending upon your location, crop, cover crop seed, all that stuff, you've determined today is the day we spread cover crops. So you get out your little ledger and you put today's date, you dump the seed in, you go down and back. There's your 60 feet. If you still got seed left in the hopper, then you, you adjust accordingly. You know, if it's half done, well then you go down and back again and you're done for the year and you make a note. Hopper was on setting three, uh, turned out to be a half rate. Uh, or you go down and back on number three and it hardly took any seed out. Well then you jump to four or five or six, go down and back again and then you make a note. Yep, you know, setting three was way too low, setting six seemed to be fairly close. Perfect, great. You're done for the year. That's it for cover cropping. All you need in your ledger is to put down the species and then later on in the fall, you just go out there and make note of what species can you see. If you had a, a six-way mix and you say, well, the, the oats, the vetch, and the radish, A, A plus. They all came up fairly according to their seeding rate um, and they had good growth. Great. Um, the, the, the Austrian winter peas and and the buckwheat and the annual ryegrass, you know, C, D, and F. Like the Austrian peas, you know, hardly any of them did anything. The buckwheat, yeah, it was okay. I expected a little thicker stand, but did okay. And the annual ryegrass, because what you want to do is start to, to establish. So anyone that doesn't work on year one, that's okay. We'll, we'll put them back in for year two. Um, and if they don't work on year two, then, then they're out. Maybe that seed just isn't good for broadcast. It's out. We're not going to keep buying seed over again that doesn't work for us. And we'll find something else to replace it. And so then that fall is when it really starts. So that fall, 
you're going to come across with your primary tillage, whoop, you hit that spot, you lift up, go over, other side, set down, continue on. It's that simple. Next spring, come across with your normal spring. Come across with your finisher, your herbicide, your planter. What? Your finisher? Yes, your finisher. I don't expect anybody to go from full tillage to no till with one shot of cover crops. That is a huge, huge ask of that soil. So the next spring, don't be scared to use a finisher pass. We've eliminated the primary tillage. That is our big goal. That aggressive primary tillage is the, the root of all evil on our soil. And so we've eliminated that. We can handle a little bit of finish work. And so you, you do that. We're, we're making steps of progress here. And so everything the next spring, business as usual. Next summer, do it all over again. So how do we know if it's working for us? Well, simple. On the first year, you pop a shovel in the ground. Dig a chunk of dirt up. Is it hard, horizontal, vertical fractures? Is it that crumbly, cottage, cheesy kind of thing with lots of pore spaces and like that? Uh, how many worms are in that shovel scoop? Uh, what kind of water infiltration do you get? Does it smell earthy if you, if you kind of find a, a plant and, and try to knock the dirt off the roots? Does the soil just fall from the roots or does it stick to the roots kind of stuff? Can you even see some white strands, little white spider web looking stuff of, of hyphae in the soil? Just kind of a basic get your hands dirty kind of deal. And then every spring you're going to do that over and over and you're going to take the tile probe and you're going to feel for compaction in that field. Um, you're going to make note of driving conditions like the next spring. Like, wait a minute, the next spring uh, we hit everything with the finisher, but when we got to that spot, it was just that much less tacky or sticky at planting. Or uh, we noticed that that spot throughout the summer there's less runoff. Um, it's less muddy at harvest kind of deal. And, and that's going to determine our success because we've done nothing in the first five years of cover cropping to influence yield. So we, we cannot use yield. Anybody that wants to use yield for, for determining success of cover crops, and they're gonna, if they're using that to justify why cover crops don't work there, just, just nod, smile, pat them on the shoulder, and, and just, okay, uh-huh, and, and just ignore it because that, that isn't even a, a, a fair assessment. There, there's so much more going on. And, uh, you know, in year 10, you know, 5, 8, and 10, then, then maybe we could start to look at yield. But years 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all we're trying to do is figure this system out. And uh, it's that simple. It's that simple. I think, I think we're done. I think we're done. And so, yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining me. You guys always have great tips, so you guys put your tips and tricks for getting started and, and what has helped you become successful And uh, in the comments. And remember, you know, some guys kind of poo-poo that, but there's a lot of people that read them other comments. And uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you.